Good morning and welcome to our online service. Although we are apart, we are blessed to have this platform where we can connect and worship Jesus. We encourage you to gather around your TV and surround yourself with loved ones in your household to watch this service together. Grab a coffee, get comfortable, and settle in as we praise the Lord. your treasure in jars of clay so take this heart lord i'll be your vessel the world to see your life in me oh, amazing grace how sweet the sound that saves
myself down and raising up the broken to
spirit longs to be it's a place of healing it's a place i live in freedom i 
Good morning. Uh, my name is Pedro. I'm the lead pastor here at Connect Church. And for me, it's an honor and opportunity to be with you, to share the word of God with you. And uh, thank you for allowing us to come into your home and together worship the Lord this morning. If it is your first time watching our Connect Church uh, online service, why don't you let us know that you are watching? You know, go to the chat comment section of the platform that you are uh, watching and uh, you know just use the thumbs up emoji uh, to let us know that you are watching this morning you you know that to prepare a, a online service like this one takes quite a time and lots of people it's an effort of a team working uh, together and today i would like to ask you to join me you know to give a big thank to our team that during the week and on Saturdays, uh, prepare this service for us so we can watch it here on Sundays. So if you don't mind, join me and giving an applause and uh, as a, a recognition and a thank you to our team for everything you do. Thank you guys for everything you do. There is lots of people involved, you know, the people behind the cameras, the production team, multimedia, the musicians, singer, uh, singers. So it's a big team and I thank you from the bottom of my heart and I believe that all Connect Church family appreciate, uh, appreciates everything that you do for the service uh, of the Lord. Uh, so thank you team for your effort. Today, it's January 17th and it's our music director birthday. Uh, and from all of our Connect family, we would like to extend our best wishes and happy birthday to Paul on your birthday. May God bless you, and uh, we pray that you have a nice day, a fun day, with the blessings of the Lord upon your life. Um, today, I, I have a message about identity, our real identity, not about our ID card, our driver's license, or our passport, but our real identity, who we, we are in reality. And over the course of, the, of our lives, you know, each person, uh, person's identity is formed and shaped through individual experiences and relationships, uh, culture, media, and, uh, you know, the influence of the world in general upon us. And we are constantly defining who we are in any way we can. Often, you know, we feel uh, uh, pressured uh, to define ourselves through our jobs, our financial status, our successes, our grades, appearance, uh, what other people uh, say about us, and many other um, means. But what happens to our identity when we experience failures or we lose someone else's favor or we became you know burned out in our jobs uh, or in, in in the place of service with everything that we do on those occasions the very foundation of our identity is shaken and altered and we will try to define ourselves by something or someone else uh, reliable safe, secure sense of self cannot fully exist when we place our identity in external things. Let me repeat again. A reliable, safe, secure sense of self cannot fully exist when we place our identity in external things. Why? Because when circumstances change, our identity constantly changes too. Our identity connects us to our purpose. We cannot fulfill our purpose in this life if we keep you know, being confused and changing our identity. Our identity sets the course 
for our life. And that's why Satan, he likes to make us confused about our identity. Knowing our identity brings you a wholeness into your life. You know, we all have been bruised uh, by the attacks of Satan and darkness uh, that affects our identity. But when I really know who I am, I get a sense of wholeness and peace as a direct result of knowing my real identity. Your identity doesn't depend on something you do or, you know, have done. We may receive a great uh, amount of messages telling us to define ourselves by external measures, uh, but what would it look like to base our identity on the way God sees us? You know, when our identity is rooted in God, that means that when we think of who we are, the first thing that would come to mind is our status as someone who is deeply loved by God. How would viewing yourself this way, the same way that God sees you, change how you live? What gets, you know, in your way of doing this? I went to the dictionary to see, you know, the meaning of identity and the di some dictionaries i saw uh, I, I looked into more than one uh, they identify identity as the way you think about yourself the way you are viewed by the world and the characteristics that define you i not in agreement with that this definition can i be bold enough to say that your true identity is who god says you are how God sees you. So your real identity, it's what God says who you are and how God sees you. All of us, all of us, you know, the around 8 billion people in the world, we all have a unique, special identity. We have our genetic code, the DNA, and we have our fingerprints. And out of the eight, almost 8 billion people in the world right now, today, no one has the same DNA or the same fingerprints, that means that you are unique. God created you with a unique identity to fulfill a specific purpose. But you got to know who you are. You need to know your real identity. Let's have a look into God's Word. Let's have a look on who we really are according to the Word of God. If you will, please grab your Bible, your New Testament. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to read a few verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. And it says, the Word of God. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. Let me make a, a, a pause here to say that you can't understand that unless you understand spirit, soul, and body. Unless you understand who you are as a human being. A spirit being with a soul living in a body. Paul says that we are all dead. Obviously, you know, we are all physically dead. Um, but there is a part of us that died through our relationship and faith in Jesus. And I, I will go back here. So let's keep reading on verse 15. He, Jesus, died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and was raised from, uh, for them. So he has stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. You see, what Paul is saying here is none of us here today, at the sound of my voice, none of us knew Jesus in flesh. None of us were there when you know, we performed different miracles around the shores of the Sea of Galilee. None of us were there when he was being crucified at, at Calvary. You know? So we do not knowing, knowing him, knowing Jesus after the flesh. So how do we know him? We know him after the Spirit and after the word of God. 
how do we know ourselves? Because it says that we stop knowing ourselves after the flesh uh, from a human point of view. So we know ourselves as well after the Spirit and the Scriptures, the Word of God. Let's go back to verse 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Not one day, not eventually in the future. It says, has become a new person. That means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. How many of you understand that by the fact that you go to church, accept Jesus, doesn't give you a new look on, on, on your body. Now, your body is still the same. Just because you are saved, your body didn't change. You are the same. You, if you were obese before accepting Jesus, probably you are still obese. Or if you had a big nose like mine, you know, before accepting Jesus, probably you still have the same nose. This verse 17 here is not talking about my body or my renewed mind. Not everything passed away in my mind, but there is a part of me that died. Who died? My spirit. My spirit that was united to Adam. You know, there is a part of me that passed away. My spirit that was in sin. There is a part of me that became new with the things of God. And that's my spirit. That's my spiritual condition. That new person is united to Christ. And the person that is united to Christ, it's beautiful. In, in, in essence, you know, this new person isn't mean. This new person has not, you know, hate towards nobody. In essence, although we are still not completely renewed in our minds to who we are now in Christ Jesus. But let me read the verse 17 again, but from a different version, a version that gives a more clarification, a better probably understanding, and it's the amplified uh, version. So 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, on the amplified uh, version, uh, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, is a new creature. Reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Because spiritual awakening brings a new life. So our real identity is engraved in our spirit. Our un new identity is found in Christ Jesus and in Him alone. One of the richest passage about identity in the Bible is found in Ephesians chapter 1. Um, so I would like to, you know, to encourage you at home if you have time after this service. You know, open up your Bible, your New Testament, go to Ephesians chapter 1 and read all that chapter. Going to give you a good clarification about who you are. Going to define who you are in Christ Jesus, your new identity. So in this passage, Apostle Paul addresses the church in Ephesus, explaining the new identity given to a person when they are in Christ. And according to Apostle Paul, according to Ephesians 1, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. We have been chosen, adopted, redeemed, forgiven, and unconditionally loved and accepted. According to Apostle Paul in Ephesians 1, we are pure, blameless, and forgiven. We have received the hope of spending eternity with God. When we are in Christ, this Aspects of our identity can never be altered by what we do but because they are eternal things. But you are still going through a process of mind renewal which will influence our out, uh, uh, out appearance, our actions, our words. We are still in that process. So renew of our mind, it's a process, and we all should, you know, uh, enjoy uh, or su should uh, uh, go in that process and, you know, enjoy the, the renewal of our mind as the word has been applied in our hearts. Often, however, exists a gap between intellectually knowing uh, these truths about who God says we are and living, that, living them out. There is a difference. There is a gap in between what God says and what we do. This can be affected by how we see ourselves. Uh, 
life experiences and the ways we allow the world to define us and to influence us. In order to live out of the fullness of our new identity in Christ, we must determine what hinders us from doing so. And, uh, you know, of course, that changes from person to person, from circumstance to circumstance. In order to live out of the fullness of our new identity in Christ, we need to start renewing our minds. Often, we battle, you know, between how God defines us and seeing ourselves with the same set of lenses as He does. God sees us one way and tells us something, but we are seen with a different kind of set of lenses. So we hear different things and we tend to believe in what we see and in what we hear you know, instead of what God, does, uh, God says. For example, the opposite of pure and blameless it's, it would be impure or stained or guilty. Perhaps a life experience has caused you to feel impure. So you believe that God sees you that way, that same way. Uh, and then you create and live out of that identity based in your actions, which is contrary to how God sees you. In order to fight against these false beliefs, we must discover the exact belief we are allowing to uh, uh, influence in a negative way our identity. According to Ephesians 1, we may see ourselves as rejected instead of <coughs> accepted. Sorry. Probably we are seeing ourselves in chains instead of set free. Under the law instead of being covered by the grace. Orphaned instead of adopted. Living out of one of these identities then affects our behaviors, our actions, our, our words. If we still think we are under the law, for instance, we may think that we must do more and more for God in order to be right with Him. We may bury ourselves in ministry, in service, or, or other good works, you know, instead of resting in the knowledge that Jesus has, the, has done everything necessary to bring us into a good favor with God, in a permanent way, forever. Once you recognize a false belief, we need to surrender to God. Turn away from it, choosing not to agree with it. Then replace that lie with the truth found in the Scriptures. After you have surrendered that lie over to God, pray that He will help you believe the truth about God. Who he says you are and make you aware of times you do not believe in that. We may not always feel, you know, forgiven or blameless. But the truth is, God sees us that way. And we should uh, agree with God and we should see ourselves the same way God sees us. This is where faith comes in. We can't do it, you know, uh, uh, without faith. We need faith to help us understand uh, what the Bible says about ourselves. If we live out of an identity based on how God sees us, we no longer feel the need to find our worth in our external circumstances. It frees us up to live confidently, you know, instead of changing who we are based on the opinions of others or prof professional successes, uh, how we see ourselves and all the other ways we define our significance. So it's so important to believe in what the Word of God says and stay firm there. And don't care. I don't care what the other people say about me, how the other people see me. I don't care about the pressure of the world, the society, you know, to define my identity. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I know how my Father in Heaven looks to me out in the way He sees me. And that it's all that I need this is a battle. It's a battle that we need to fight uh, daily. That's why it's so important to start renewing our minds and believing in what the Word of God says and the plain Word of God in our lives so we can come to a stage that we are in agreement with God. Let me ask kind of some rhetoric questions so you can think about it and, and give your own answer later. 
How would believing the truth about your new identity in Christ change the way you live? It's basically, in other words, so believing in what the Word of God says about your new identity, now that you are saved, now that you are in Christ, how that would change you know, your life in a daily, uh, in a, in a daily, in a daily, in, uh, during the daily circumstances that you need to face different circumstances. Do you see yourself the same way as God sees you? If not, you can change that situation today, right now. And the first thing you need to do is a small first step towards God. You need to recognize, to acknowledge that you are a sinner and Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Son of God and confess your sins and accept Him. That's all you need to do. That's the first step. Then it comes, you know, the renewing of your mind. But the first step, it's th toward God. It's believing, acknowledging, recognizing that you are a sinner. That's what the Bible tells in Romans. And then confess with your mouth your sins and you will be saved. So I would like to challenge you today. If you are watching and you come to that conclusion, uh, Pastor, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. I'm not sure if I'm a child of God. I don't know if I, I ever, I don't remember ever doing a prayer to recognize my sins and ask for forgiveness. Why don't you do it right now? Whatever you are, you know, could be in your kitchen, your living room, in your in your bedroom, in your car, wherever you are watching this, this service right now. Take just a, you know, a moment and pray. I can help you with a simple prayer. Just follow, you know, and repeat my words. And uh, just acknowledging that you are a sinner and recognizing that Jesus is a Savior. And when you are doing that, confessing with your mouth, you know, you will be saved. So if you want, just repeat after me, saying, Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Today, after what I heard, I recognize that I need you. I recognize that I'm a sinner. Forgive my sins. Jesus, forgive my sins. Accept me in the family of God. Make me a new person. Help me in my new life in Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, if you made a, this simple prayer from the bottom of your heart, meaning it, I, I mean meaning it. The Bible tells us in Romans 10 that you are already saved. You are saved. You belong to the family of God. And the Holy Spirit of God, He came upon you and is living inside of you to help you. And He's the one, as you read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is going to help you to renew your mind, renew your thoughts, your actions, your, your doing. You will see you're going to be a different person. Not just inside, but on outside as well. So the change is going to come from inside out. We are here to help you. We are here to walk with you. I know there is lots of questions in your mind. That's why we would love to know, you know, that you made that, this decision so we can, when possible, sit with you, have a coffee, and help you, you know, uh, and explain the Word of God to you. We have different materials that we would make available for you to help you in this new journey. So... But you need to know that you made that decision. We need to know who you are. So if you don't mind, why don't you go to the chat comment section on the platform that you are, you know, watching and use those two hands up uh, emoji, uh, hands up hands emoji. And, you know, just, it, and, and, and uh, you know, just put that emoji there so we will know that you accepted Jesus. And someone from our team or even myself we will be in touch with you so we can get connected and we will help you in this new journey. So please go to the comment right now and, you know, use that emoji to end up emoji, you know, uh, uh, and we will know that you accepted Jesus and we will walk with you. I would like to invite you to, you know, come in next Sunday at 10 a.m. here uh, on Facebook or YouTube to watch our next service. Um, because you need to be, uh, feed yourself with the word of God. Thank you for watching. We have some more announcements and let's hear what Susie has for us. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing about our real identity in Christ. The Bible testifies to the importance of giving our possessions to God as an act of worship. In earlier times, worshipers of God would approach God with something physical of value to offer up to him. 
Today, we can offer in the same matter financially as an act of our worship. If you feel compelled to do so, there are three ways you can. Through online giving by going to www.connectedmonton.ca forward slash give or via e-transfer to info at connectedmonton.ca and lastly by mail to P.O. Box 31024 Nemeo Center, Edmonton, Alberta, T5Z 3P3. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating communion. So have your symbols prepared so that we can break bread and drink juice and reflect on Jesus' death and resurrection together. Thank you for tuning in. Have a blessed week and see you again next Sunday at 10 a.m.